Hello YouTube, we're going to be learning how to make an adjustable <coughs> bow tie. My client likes, she's into a menswear phase, so she's wanting uh, some outrageous fabric ties and I had some bow tie hardware that I had picked up about five years ago or so that I was going to use to make my nephew when he was small, like three. Uh, <clears throat> some bow ties to wear to church but I never got around to it so we are going to utilize the this hardware now for my client now I did a little bit of research I was trying to find a pattern now a true bow tie is really difficult to tie but we're gonna use a cheating method here and this is basically what we want to end up with, except for we want a double layer. We want two of these bow ties, uh, one on top of the other. So we first went and, or I first went <laughs> and downloaded this pattern here, and it's this one. It's a Acrobat format PDF. And I used, I saved it, and what I did was to use it just as a template. Now, I tried this pattern three different ways, with a third time, with my own twist added into it, was the working one. And, and the uh, default thumbnail for this video is going to be the uh, tie around the neckline of my mannequin. So you'll see what I'm talking about. It turned out real cute. But I did go ahead and save this just to give me a little bit of an idea. So let's get into pattern editor right quick. And what we're going to do, we're going to merge a new document. Come on, merge, merge, merge. With, here it is, the DIY bow tie pattern. So we're going to open this up. I'm trying to find my smoky smoky. Okay, now we need to zoom out a little bit. And I want to rotate this so it's sideways. Okay, my computer's acting weird. Uh, try that again. All right. That looks good, except I'm going to flip him this way. And then I'm going to flip him that way. There we go. Now he's on track. Now let's measure from here to here. We want about two and a half. That is 80.971. So let's go over to the calculator, if I can get it up. Let's clear everything out. We want two and a half inches in width right there. That's finished width divided by what it is, 80.971. So we want it at 0.03%, basically 3% of what uh, this is. Let's subtract a full digit one. That means I have to shrink this by 96.91 inches okay so let's take that out and SZ we're going to shrink it proportionally and what did we say 96.91 okay let's zoom all here it is now let's start making some arcs first thing I want to do is to go straight across, so I'm going to use my shift key. Let's go about to this point right here where it actually meets up right there. Let's go to there. Click, and we're going to try and just give us a nice, go straight up in the middle if you can. We're going to try to give us a nice little arc there. Okay, 
now we want a line from this point of the arc up to here. Now I want to group those. And I want to copy them. And I want to flip it. And let's just try to pull it straight down. See, you can tell it's not even. Let's get it even. So let's line it up right here. And I think what I'm going to do is go into this window here. And where is this meeting up? Okay, we want to get it as close in here as we can. That's pretty good. Okay, ZP for Zoom Previous. And then I'm going to drag this straight down. Ah, fudge cookies. So we got it lined up at this point. So I'm just going to go in and drag it straight down to where we want this. So this and this are going to be perfectly even. So let's go ahead and draw a line. So we just wanted to get this pattern in as a generalized template. Hold down your shift key. Go up to this point and do your right clicks on this to get it really lined up. Let's zoom out. Now I want to take that and copy it. Let's bring it down here. Now remember I told you to go into the center to, to place your point. Let's locate our midpoint. Oh, they're grouped, that's why. Okay, ungroup and ungroup. Okay, now we locate a midpoint, LM, LM, and we're going to draw a line right down here. Hold your shift key to get it perfectly straight to those points. Intersect this and this and this and this. This line, this line, this line, and this line, and this line need to be changed. Style, because that's a stitching line. Now this one stays solid because we're going to place a fold marker and that line is two and a half so we want to place a fold marker of two inches in length going vertically. You've got to wait for the machine to get <laughs> to decide it's going to allow you to place it. And you just need to flip that guy over this way and move him. If you're a seamstress, you know this means place on fold. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to consider this two and a half inches to be our smaller bow that goes on top of a larger one. Now, how much larger do we want the larger bow? Well, we're at two and a half. If we went to another, another three eighths, that's going to be let's let's give it a half an inch. So let's do an offset. And here, wait a minute, forgot some. I want to go to. I still want to keep a stitching line because now we've already. This is the lower. Let's put a text in. No, this is the upper bow.
it's kind of long. Let's see if we can break that up. Let's delete and hit enter. See if that helped. Yep, okay. So this is our lower bow. Now, let's say for giggles, we're going to uh, make the make it a quarter inch on each side bigger for the big bow. That'll give me that'll give me a three inch in through here. So let's do a quarter inch offset and we are still doing a stitching line. Just keep on double clicking on the line you want to offset and in which direction and then hit the space key. And once you're done with that, go ahead and get rid of that. Now let's do a little bit of intersecting here so we don't have to later. Now this is actually a double duty pattern. You could just print this out once and use some uh, tracing paper, use some uh, wax, I've used wax paper as pa for patterning before, uh, or even tissue paper. I get a whole bunch of tissue paper from Michaels for like about seven dollars. They're big sheets. I do have to occasionally tape sheets together, but I don't care. All right, now here's what I'm gonna do. We've all got these intersected, so I'm going to take the outside lines here and I'm going to change them to a different color. Let's CH for change. Let's put them as a pretty blue. All right, now let's go up to down to the interior bow and let's change these to a green. Okay, that's not real good. Green's hard to see. Let's find a different color. I don't like doing orange because when you select it, it's red. How about a purple? Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so we've got the inner bow and we've got the outer bow. So let's go ahead and select this outer bow. And remember, this is all finished sizing. And we're going to leave this as it is. We're going to copy all this. And let's see. This was the outer bow. the underbow. Because I got the one on the outside, that's the one that's under. Okay, now we can get this. And we'll copy that. And this, I, we don't have to change any text on. Alright, now we need to offset with a solid line for our cutting line, okay. And we're going to do, uh, let's do a point three seven five, a three eighths inch seam allowance. Give us a little bit of wiggle room. So let's just do some intersecting right quick. Notice I left this line solid. I did not color that line. And it, the only reason I colored these lines is to differentiate in here. I will color them all back black, all back to black. My daughter, oh my gosh, my daughter. She's the most difficult person to love. Any mother, I'm sure that you might have a child like that, the one that's so hard. She is in prison. She was on drugs for 15 years. She is a total addict. She was in prison, do, supposed to be doing so well. 
her friends started sniping because they said I wouldn't do anything from her <laughs> on Facebook. And she stood up for them whenever they acted mean to me instead of telling them to shut up, that's her mother. And they don't know what they're talking about. So if she wants to have people who are going to never be there when the axe finally falls, so to speak, and throw away the people who will be there for her. Okay, then, you know, I don't know what to do for her. But I found out uh, I discontinued all communication. I set it up so she would be restricted from writing me letters because her letters are always mean and I'm tired of being abused. So I, I called the DFC and I said, I don't want to hear about her. I don't want to know about her. I don't want to know anything. Lo and behold, today I get the email message saying that she's escaped. She was on work release. She was supposed to be working during the day and coming back to the prison at night. She was doing so well. And she escaped. She didn't clock in. I don't know what's going on in that girl's head, but I know what's going to happen. She's going to go out, do drugs, and die. Let's make this neckband next. I want to make a 20 inch, so I'm going to click here, hold down my shift key, drag across, let go of my shift, and hit the number 20. That'll give me a 20 inch. Now I want another line. I want a 3 quarter inch finished width. So I need to have from here, and I right clicked down. 0.75. That's three quarters of an inch. Because these little hardware pieces are three quarters of an inch. When I lay it down on my grid, the opening in there is right at three quarters. So I'm going to be sewing this as a seam. And this is the seam. And let's go ahead and copy these. I'm going to group them. That way I can flip them around however I want to flip them. And not have to keep selecting. And now we can ungroup. I'm going to get closer so I can pull it right up to here. Alright, now all of this here except this one. I like to put my folds on the left. Don't ask me why. Those are sewing lines, so let's change the style on those to sewing lines. And let's do some offsets. We're going to do offsets of, what do we do, 3 eighths of an inch. Okay. And let's put a place on fold marker. It's a 3 quarter inch in there, so we need to do about half an inch vertically. That guy needs to be flipped this way. And then eked in. Let's do some intersections. And you know what? I think that I'll do something different here. I think what I'll do so I don't have so much, I'm going to change this to a place on the lengthwise fold. I think if I do it that way, I won't have near as much seaming inside here. I think that would actually work, work best. So let's place this on the fold. And we need to rotate that guy. Let's see, rotate from the center. And let's pull him here. 
and we're going to S Z. We're going to grow horizontally 500% wrong. Okay, we'll take you out then. <laughs> Let's just do this the way I know how to do it. That's going to do it the right way. Place on fold. We're going to do a horizontal. Let's do a 17 inch because I know that's 20 inches long. to be flipped. That's a place on fold then. Alright, so this guy then will need to be changed to a sewing line. Alright, so we can intersect him to here. And uh, wrong. Offset. I need to do him. That's it. Now let's get all this intersected in. And this length is really kind of arbitrary. I just like a longer length than I really think I'm going to need. Most necks are about 16 inches. Sometimes you'll have a wider neck but this is 20 inches. Let's put some text in that reflects that. 20 inch by 3 quarter inch neck band. place on lengthwise fold. I still think if it's a real heavy fabric what we, you would have to do is we're just going to say okay uh, if it was a real heavy fabric what would you what you would have to do is to go ahead and add another seam over here and then cut the top part out of your fashion fabric and the lower part out of your lining fabric. That way it you have some a thinner fabric that's going to help you. Uh, it's slicker and it'll help you rot uh, turn it a little bit easier. So let's zoom out. That looks good. And we're going to group him. So we've got this guy. He's done. Let's group him. This guy. Group him. This is the printed pattern now, and I'll include this in a link. I'm going to rotate these to where how I want them printed. First of all, I want this guy up. Oops. Went a little overboard. There. This one. Like that. can rotate him. And put him up here. All of these things right through here. These are all secondary and we really don't even need them. File save as FA. I'm going to keep mine in the accessories and we're going to do bow tie. I already saved it before, but we'll save it again. And there it is. Now we do control P for print. Now I'm going to make a black brocade bow tie. I am not going to, oops, what 
happened. It's in the mall. What's this? Ah. Okay, now we can print. I had a miscellaneous point somewhere. I did make one out of wool, and it was the first one that I made, and it turned out pretty good. I think I'll flip him around a little bit, put him over here, and then this guy can come over. Boy, he barely makes it in there, doesn't he? <laughs> um, can't rotate him any further. Now let's select the page that we want to print, this one and this one, and I'm going to print these to Adobe Acrobat just so I can get my pattern printed, and it'll print full scale, not an exaggerated scale. get to my desktop because it's going to ask me, uh-huh, bow tie, yes, I think my memory is going bad. It's taken so long to do anything. closed. See, it's just taking forever to do anything. Okay, it's because I hadn't hit it. All right. So that's done. Let's do another quick save. Close him out. Now here's our pattern. So you just go ahead and print that out and cut it up and I'll come back when we are ready to start sewing. See you in a bit. Okay, here is the second part of making a bow tie. The pattern is included down below in a link that you can download or you can just follow along with the instructions on how I made it and make one yourself. I went ahead and cut out all my pattern pieces and my interfacing. And I've applied my interfacing to the fabric. I'm going to use my satin pins here. And what I'm going to do is to go ahead and stitch all this together.
three quarters of an eight of an inch is going to be six eighths. So that's what I'm going to stitch it at six eighths of an inch. Now I'll take this over to the uh, rotary mat and trim it down with a rotary wheel. It's ready. Okay, this pattern piece is really good. Make sure I throw my test pattern pieces away so I don't get what's what. And she likes the shiny background and dull flowers. Now I am not sewing this in contrasting thread for you because this is actually the bow tie that she's going to get. And so it has to be sewn with matching thread. This might be needing to be flipped around this way. No, maybe not. Now one thing about brocade, if you have any nicks and picks on your hands, it's going to get caught in the fabric. So make sure that you buff your hands or whatever and they're real smooth before you start working with brocade. Now I think what I say, I cut this out with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that'll make sure that everything is cut, uh, encompassed. This brocade does have a tendency to ravel. And we'll put four in the corners here. So from about here all the way around and then back to here leaving this area right here open for turning now once I get my permanent stitch all the way around I will go from where the permanent stitch ends here over to where it began here with a long basting stitch that will be removed and I'll show you why when we take this to the ironing board so let's go ahead and it's three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. Which is going to put it right there. But if I went to the left... No, I don't like that. Okay.
cut this off. Let's get all our pins out. <laughs> Lengthen our stitch. Now we're going to put this little basting stitch in. From right. Let's go to this other side. From right here. Over to where we started. Well, that's not going to be taken out yet. And we're going to leave those threads on. Next thing I want to do is kind of come in here from the back and go ahead and clip my corners. Now because this brocade on one side is interfaced, that side's not going to ravel out. So I can cut that one down, kind of grade the seam allowance. Yeah, no, no, I'm quiet. Sorry about that. I'm almost ready to go and press. I was distracted thinking about something, to be honest. And you're actually quite lucky I didn't talk out loud about it. <laughs> I found myself making videos where I wasn't talking about the video, but I had a something running around in my head and I was vocalizing it. <laughs> okay, let's go take you to the ironing board and this thing turned. Sorry about the jiggle. The jiggle, wiggle, jiggle. We're at the ironing board. Let's just give it a quick press. Alright, now we need to find where our basting threads were and they're right on this side. We're going to separate these two seam allowances and press them open. So let's start by opening them up. They seem to be welded together. All right, let's start by opening it up on the interfacing side. And all I'm doing is curling it around that basting thread the way it would be curved if 
I had stitched it. Now I've got some feathers. Look, uh, feathers. And then we're going to turn this the other way. Make sure that folded edge was flat. And we're going to press this side. And just line it up around the seam line. Kind of roll it back. Don't burn your fingers. Okay, what that does is to tell me where my turn in is going to be and how I'm going to hand stitch it. Let's get this thread out. Let's turn it. Okay, we're back, and it's time to put the hardware on. I'm hoping you'll be able to see what I'm doing. We, I've already got both of these pieces, the smaller top, top upper one and the larger underneath one, uh, which stitched the openings down, pressed them up real good, and, and they're just kind of sitting on top of each other for now. I've taken the neck band... Now when I sewed it down the length, I went ahead and pressed it so that the seam allowance was going to go right down the center back. And then I did a cross stitch there and turned it after that. So I have a finished edge right here. Now on this finished edge, I'm actually going to have to get in here with a different presser foot. Okay, what I want... Um, there it is. I want my zipper foot. I think. First thing we're going to do on this finished edge is to feed this little hook. This is the thing that makes your strap adjustable, right here. This is the eye. Right here, that this hook fits into. So it hooks like this. And then you adjust adjust it up to fit tight with this, through this. And, and I'll show you how it's done. It's kind of wonky. So the first thing we're going to do is to put the hook on. Find the back. 
I can't hold on to anything anymore. And you're just going to go in the front, leave your hook part facing towards the table, have the right side of your neck band facing upward. So the hook's on the bottom, you can feel the hook in your finger right here, and then the right side of the neck band is facing upwards. And you feed it through. You might have to work with it a little bit. Get it in there and then grab it if you can and pull it on through. Okay. Now I've got a long piece right here that's probably about three eighths of an inch and I don't want to catch my zipper foot on it so I'm taking, here's where the hook ends, right here. So let's go ahead and sew this as close to that as we can. in to get it to fit. One more. There. Okay, so now our hook is on. Okay, you got your hook facing down. You've threaded one end of your adjuster in. Go ahead and thread the other end. Now, you're going to get your hook, or your eye rather, thread it through. Give me a big loop right down here so I can see what I'm doing. And then this is going to go in here into the far side and comes back comes into the near side and then goes back up through the far side I think that's it This should be like that. There you go. Okay, we did it. That goes in last. Now here's what we have to do. We have to get in. See how we've got this looped back in? I just want to sew right here. That's the only place I want to sew. So make yourself a big loop there. I go ahead and get a pen. You might have to work it a little bit longer. And this is what I need to change to. our adjustable neckband. I think Amy has a 15 or 16 inch neck. 
So what I want to do is get it pretty close to that. Let it out a little bit. glad I made those 20 inches. I probably ought to do. Let me go double check and see what her neck is. 12. It's 12. Men have 16. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's 12. Where have been then? I need to kind of figure out what 12 is going to be. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's go into that center point right here. And put a pin in the center because this is going to go. The line needs a little bit better. Sometimes I'll go ahead and just put a tack stitch in the middle. That's a bad pin. That's middle is going to be about right here. Okay, I've kind of marked the middle. Get that guy down a little bit more. Right about right here. I might have to redo him a little bit differently. And here's the middle of our neck. We want to make sure the hook is up now, and we're going to put this neckband right in the middle, right here. Now, get your needle and thread, make sure it's knotted. <laughs> you might want to do a double strand on this. I'm not, but you could. Just take a couple of stitches. Just to hold it in place. Okay. That's down. Now the only thing left to do on this is the center band. I've got a couple of choices here. Uh, the suit that she's going to be wearing this with, we use this trim. You saw one of my videos that showed how I put this trim on. Now I could do this, pull it, a couple wraps like that. The only problem with that is this gimp really unravels. And you really have to be glued, glued, glued. And I don't think it looks good. So I'm just going to do uh, 
so fabric. So I'm just going to cut a piece. I'm going to have it a little bit wide because I want all of it to kind of mush up like that. So I think I'm going to make it a finished width of one inch. I think that that would work real well. Finished width of one inch. And then all I'm going to do is the same thing as I did with the neckband. Go ahead and turn it and then stitch one end so I can, um, I, pr I mean, stitch it, press it, and then twist it so I can do one end. Um, and then just wrap it around and whip stitch it down. And I'll show a picture whenever it's done. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.